G'day folks and welcome to the channel. Now I recently did a demo video about two Joyo amp sims in a box, the American Sound and the AC Tone. Now they're budget versions of Tech 21 products um, with appalling graphics, but they get the job done and they're really, really inexpensive. Aside from the American Sound, which is based on a vintage Fender amp, the AC Tone is obviously a Vox AC30. You've also got the British Sound, which is a Marshall, and there's also the California Sound, which is a Mesa Boogie type of amplifier. I don't own those two, I don't particularly need to, but there's one other one they've brought out relatively recently, and it is the Oxford Sound, based on the Tech 21 Oxford, only for a fraction of the price. The Tech 21 will cost you over $400 Australian. This thing cost me $59, which is a bargain. It's like 30 bucks US, I guess, and around about 30 quid UK. It's a very, very inexpensive pedal. Uh, it is based on the Orange Amps. Orange Amps were created by Cliff Cooper in 1968 in London. I don't think they were in Oxford at all, but I don't know why they're called Oxford Sound. Uh, and there's actually quite a good couple of interviews with Cliff Cooper on YouTube. Really worth checking out. And Rhett Schull did a very good uh, little piece on Orange Amps. But I've always been fascinated by Orange Amps. I've never owned one. I've never even played through one. But they just have this funky look about them. They just don't look like anything else on the planet. So I thought I'd take a punt for $59 and grab myself an Oxford Sound. Sounds like a Bob Dylan song. Oxford Sound, Oxford Sound. And here it is. Now, I love the Joyo pedal boxes. They've got pedal written all over the front there. It kind of looks a bit spacey. But then when you look on the side, it's rewritten there. It's kind of a ransom note. So that's probably to appeal to some punk rockers out there. It's a very, um, never mind the bollocks. Now, just reading the owner's manual, it's pretty much the same as the other two in its wording, except I notice there's a little bit more detail about the voice control. It seems to do a little bit more than what it does on the AC tone and the American sound. So we'll probably have a little bit of a look at that later. Okay, let's have a look at it. Well, actually, it looks great. That's a really nice looking pedal. Uh, it doesn't have those horrific graphics. The other ones, this is really neat looking. Very nice. Actually, I'm no stranger to orange pedals. I just gathered them all up and I was surprised at how many I do own. So orange is a fairly classic color for a lot of effects pedals. Anyway, with no further ado, let's plug this thing in. And I'm gonna use the Fender Stratocaster and I'm gonna get the exact same tone as I got a lovely clean tone with on the earlier two pedals. And that is the low, just about 10 o'clock to almost quarter past and the mids and highs, five to 10 past, drive on zero and the voice sort of giving it a bit, bit of fullness. Okay, now I like my treble, but that is super shrill to my ears. It's really, really piercing high, and there's not that much high. It looked, I won't waste your time. I have mucked around with this pedal before. It does not do clean tone, so it's nothing like the AC tone and the American sound. This is a totally different beast, so we'll treat it that way. Now, as with last time as well, I've split the signal. That was just straight in the interface. But now I'm gonna play with a little bit more of a mid boost and some drive, and I'm gonna blend the two sounds of the mic'd up amp and directly in, and I'm gonna to try to push it for more of a, a sort of a Tube Screamer-esque sound with the boosted mids. So that's sort of in that ballpark. It's, yeah, it definitely makes your amp sound bigger. Like it's got a real bite to it. It's got a lot of attitude, this pedal. I'm not liking it, to be honest, with the Stratocaster. It's just a bit shrill. And these knobs are like hair triggers. A slight bump either way, and it, it makes a massive difference. They are so super sensitive. I'm gonna try a bit more drive this time and use some of that uh, voice in conjunction with it and see what we got there.
Yeah, again, it's big sounding. It's got loads of attitude, but I, I, I don't find it a very tight drive. I don't know. Maybe it's just what I play just isn't doing it for me at the moment. So might give the Strat a rest and try a humbucker style guitar. Now this is an artist. Yes, here I go again. As you've probably seen, I own a lot of artist brand guitars. Australian company, made in China. They're super affordable. I have quite a number of them and I've paid for them all. This is a semi-holo electric BCHY58. Uh, what, what that means is a black cherry. There's a, a cherry version, which I happen to also own, but the black cherry is a step up. The cherry is 310 Australian dollars. This one's over 400, but I managed to get it on the artist website in the bargain bin for 330. And the black cherry has a couple of features like the split coil option where you can split it from a humbucker to a single coil and also locking tuners and a slightly better, smoother bridge. So this is a great guitar. I found the cherry did go out of tune a bit. So that's why I did buy this model. Now I've kept these settings exactly where I left the Strat. So let's hear what this sounds like. Okay, see immediately that's a tighter overdrive it sounds a lot better it's chunkier and meatier yeah now i'm starting to sort of get it this is this is starting to sound good <laughs> I'm going to roll off the mids this time and see if we can get a, a vaguely metal sounding tone. I'm wearing a Joy Division inspired t-shirt so I'm not exactly a metalhead. And I'm also going to add a bit of reverb. So this is DI, this is straight into the box and with some reverb just to, to open it up a bit. Okay, well, that sounded pretty good. Look, again, I can't emphasize enough how sensitive these knobs are. Really, you need to have a notepad and a pencil if you're fooling around with this thing for any length of time because you can pull some brilliant sounds, but the trouble is you forget how you got them because there's so many configurations. So you really, if you, if you get a sound you really like, well, jot it down or put it in your phone or something for future reference because it's there's so much variability. There's too much choice for me. So what I'm gonna to do to really simplify it, I'm just gonna keep the EQ settings at just under 12 o'clock and all I'm gonna do is fool around with the drive and the voice control and blend a little bit of DI and amp and add some reverb and not add some reverb. Um, you'll see what I'm doing as I do it. Now I'm gonna start with the drive at noon and see how that sounds. <laughs> going to increase the drive to about three o'clock and I'm going to adjust the drive and the voice accordingly and it's probably the perfect time to jump in and talk about the voice control on this unit as opposed to on the other two that I reviewed earlier. The voice is an impulse response that simulates different cab speaker styles and the more you increase the voice control the bigger the cab tends to sound but with this it also works as a distortion unit. It actually distorts the more you push it so it does work as almost the second drive along with the drive and that just creates more complexity with this pedal it's a full-on unit this one anyway here's the drive at three o'clock <laughs> So there's some really big sounds there. Um, yeah, I have mucked around with this like the day I got it, to be honest. And, and as I say, there are so many configurations. It's very unlike the pig tone distortion that I demoed a while ago, which has one good sound, but it always sounds good. 
With the Oxford sound, it's just so much tweaking and there's so much real estate on those knobs where it is just unusable, like just too wimpy or too harsh or too over the top. But if you like really crafting a tone and really honing in on sounds, this is the pedal for you. One thing this Joyo Oxford sound does exceptionally well is lead tones. It feeds back at a really low level, which is kind of cool as well, but it just gives you screaming lead tones. I think this pedal would be good if you need a particular sound to sit in a mix as well. So if you love to sculpt and craft a tone, this could be the pedal for you. And for 59 bucks, why not just take a punt? So I'm going to play a little bit of lead. I'm going to use a bit of stereo separation, a bit of reverb, and give a blend of the amp sound and the DI sound. <laughs> I think I don't play hard rock. That's why all I've been playing this demo has been bad ACDC riffs or ACDC style riffs because it just compels you to play that sort of music. It is a hard rock pedal right down the line. So if you're into hard rock playing, and I'd certainly use this for lead playing on a, on a recording. Um, I love the lead tone it gives you. I think the most logical thing to do at this point is to create a loop and I'll just show you the insane amount of sweep these knobs have. Now I must admit I have used a fair bit of compression here because I just want to iron out a lot of the volume discrepancies that happen when you sweep through but you've got to be pretty amazed at the vast array of sounds you can get with the Joyo Oxford sound. So that is the Joyo Oxford sound. I'm probably the worst person in a way to demo this pedal. I don't really play the sort of music that I think this compels you to play, which is Akadaka hard rock. If, if that's your bag, I think this is a pedal for you, but it is fun. It's a crazy pedal. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'm gonna be back with some different sort of videos in the future. I'm gonna try a couple of different things. So stay subscribed, hit the bell so you know when I do have a rare new video coming up. Thanks for bearing with me and cheers.